Hey, yeah, welcome everyone. In this video, we're going to be looking at a old Tesla uh, pancake coil. In essence, it's like a jewel thief uh, that takes 1.2 volt. I think these rechargeables are 1.2 volt. Uh, yeah, um, 1.2 volt, 2300 mAh and that's going to boost that up over 100 volts uh, so here i've got the auto ranging multimeter here to display the output voltage and normally i use this sort of thing for um, charging up uh, different types of batteries pretty much doesn't really care which type, what voltage of battery uh, when you consider that it's going up over 100 volts. Now it would take like a big battery, it would take forever uh, to charge up but it, and that would be somewhat impractical and I only ever really used it for things like this uh, was my, uh, the batteries, the 9 volt batteries that I would use in my multimeters. Uh, and so I didn't, it wasn't built just for that, but that was one of the main uses in the end. I just used it as a battery charger. Um, sometimes it was employed to um, revive a battery that wouldn't, be, wouldn't recharge. Sometimes batteries, for whatever reason, uh, won't be acknowledged by the battery charger and um, this circuit would allow me to uh, connect that up on the output and pulse it it's a pulse DC um, I don't stress about the wiring I've got it uh, close up to the camera um, basically because it's sitting on jar of peanut butter a plastic jar of peanut butter uh, and I've got all the other components up on various I don't know what that one is parmesan cheese and the battery is sitting on salt um, it's done purely to get it away from the base that it stands on and that's the aluminium plate or in essence a capacitor uh, and I'll demonstrate the importance of having that spacing uh, at the moment it's I don't know a hand height away <laughs> from it's um, you know maybe 10 centimeters off the deck now that um, has such a drastic effect on on the transformer uh, that it just can't be done but I needed to be able to show this um, whilst you obviously can't hold the camera and demonstrate this so I've chosen to elevate it get it away from the aluminium plate even within that distance there it's still going to be having a reasonably strong impact and you'll see that in a second uh, with the light but uh, sorry with the voltage um, and it's just something to keep in mind when you're placing your coils or even when you're testing and building coils um, you go to test something uh, that's near um, any particular any metal it doesn't have to be a particular type of metal but certain things have more of an effect so just got to be conscious of that this is an old um, really old uh, Tesla pancake coil and it's arguably built incorrectly um, I've seen other people on YouTube talk about building uh, pancake coils and in Tesla's patent it's not done this way um, I need to point out in Tesla's patent that uh, the wires lay side by side in this scenario here it's a bit tricky to see but the wires are one on top of the other here so there's two coils here um, 
and closest to my finger is coil number one which consists of two wires which are one on top of the other so we've got one two layer and then the second coil three and four layers so each coil is as close as I was able to make it uh, so they're they're not identical but they're they're similar um, and the closer you can get them to being the same dimensions um, in wire length that sort of thing the better um, so we've got one coil there is the drive coil and that's operating off of again don't freak out schematics will be at the end as always uh, so <laughs> it's a bit tricky having it all balanced up here because wires don't want to uh, sit anywhere but where they want to sit um, so we have uh, on this side we have these three terminals here they are the drive side and I believe that's the top coil and then the coil underneath are these three terminals and that's the output side so there's no um, electrical physical connection between the two coils it's purely induction it's just a wireless transfer of energy uh, and Tesla talks about um, the uh, power enhancement function of the pancake coil and again it is visible in this style of winding but again that is not the patent style or damn that just <laughs> disconnected my solder there uh, quick pause while I resolder that <laughs> Okay, so I soldered that back on. It was the connection for the full wave bridge rectifier, which I've stuck to one side of the term one um, terminal of the output coil, which is these three here, and then the other side is this yellow jumper lead, which comes. You see, it goes around there underneath my hand on the left hand side and then over to the other side of the full wave bridge rectifier again schematics at the end uh, so that gives us that DC output which I won't have on screen there but more importantly we want to see the uh, output voltage so this will be the output voltage at the moment that's going to just that meter and then I'll show the voltage of that 9 volt battery and then we'll connect that up and um, you'll see that that starts to charge that up and again we're going to be going from 1.2 volts to over 100 so very very easy circuit just the one transistor and a 1k pot and I've got a resistor there as well again I'll put the value on the screen uh, in editing so let's go all right battery holder uh, again struggling to get everything on screen maybe the way the battery might hold it down so we're going to watch this meter here as soon as I connect this up it's going to jump up this should be around about 1.2 volts here on the left hand side screen and this one will go over 100 volts and set to auto ranging set to DC which is just below the bottom of the screen there okay let's go and what's that settling out at 130 volts DC and our input voltage is 1.249 so the reason for the potentiometer over here is it changes your output voltage and so it lowers the or increases the voltage and then so now we've got it wound all the way to the other end of that potentiometer and we're looking at 180 volts DC and what you'll notice is that pulls down heavily on the uh, AA battery voltage so that's really taking it out of the battery and the battery won't last long 
and the best way to do this is to connect up your load and then because it's naturally going to exceed the battery voltage anyway and again um, don't go connecting up expensive batteries you know like things that require battery management systems and that sort of stuff like you'd be a f you'd be a fool to do it um, yeah do it at your own risk if you've got something that's dying and you're not worried about having uh, an experimental risk take an experimental risk then you know try it out I've found a lot of things work on it but I've also found a few things died so you know your call um, adult discretion required uh, so that also f allows the function of my wireless cord. I'll turn off that light there and block that one and we can see that that's a wireless light that's functioning and when you connect the load battery as I'm about to do um, you will see most of this will disappear like it, it remains barely functional um, but its main purpose here is um, being able to charge up batteries that won't accept a charge uh, so if I connect this 9 volt battery as it as I said was just primarily used for all of my um, meters and and other tests as well uh, so we've got the negative side there I'll connect that over to the negative of that meter and then we connect the positive side and we should see this meter drop down uh, to just below 9 volts there we go and this light is still functional but you can see what I meant about it becoming a lot dimmer so now that's charging up that battery and this is where you use the pot now to fine-tune that balance you want to go for the highest current output and you can see like as I'm turning it now the current is going up and so the sorry battery voltage on this one's going up because of an increase in current and so it's just a case of tuning that depending upon the battery and that's just a resistance uh, issue there and so whilst this singular battery here uh, would not be able to charge up the 9 volt battery on its own uh, it would come pretty close to about two thirds um, and then uh, you just use another battery either that or connect up like a little solar fairy garden light uh, little solar controller they have built into them that's primarily for a 1.2 volt battery they put the cheapest nastiest battery in there possible but uh, if you were to strip that you know two dollar garden light get the little controller from it and you could put on a little baby panel um, and charge that up either that or uh, wire up a couple of double-a batteries in um, parallel and then you've got yourself a practical charger um, I, t I took I think I used three double-a batteries um, probably pulled them before they were properly flat uh, just in an attempt just to see uh, how quickly I could charge this 9 volt battery and so um, that took um, I think it was 12 hours or 13 hours uh, to charge up that battery so that was all well and good all right thanks for watching everyone please like share and subscribe uh, there are many other things you can do to this and you know you can run like little 5 volt uh, LED lights and all sorts of stuff. I I did mean to have 
some other ones here to show you but I don't know what's happened to those all right um, but that's the sound principle like it's very very easy to build anyone can build it it's not necessarily by Tesla's patent still works however which is pretty fascinating um, yeah 1.2 volts to let's disconnect this uh, 9 volt and see what this auto ranger goes up to 133 volts and that's probably because the pot there is wound to a point where it's limiting so let's go the other way all right 180 volt so 1.2 volt to 180 volts so I just realized I left that full throttle walked away uh, considered that video done but I'd forgotten to show you the effect of uh, placing it near the aluminium so I will uh, disconnect the 9 volt battery and the auto range multimeter is now at 129 again if I crank that right open Again, it's, it, I left it for like 10 minutes before I realized what I'd done. So, uh, voltage has dropped a bit uh, on both units. Um, and if I would leave it like that f for very long, it would flatten that battery in no time at all. Uh, so, you can see how adjusting the pot there changes that voltage if we go counterclockwise we get low voltage and then a high amperage on the output and again a high voltage so 173 with the battery disconnected if I remove the peanut butter out the way and watch the meter as I lower that to the deck even the transistor getting close to it should affect it as well so here we go so we're going down and then we get down to the base if we're putting it on the deck it's 127 if we come up off the deck 172, 174, 5. So, yeah, just be mindful of what you're putting your coils near. You'll think, you know, because you were taught in school <laughs> that it didn't matter. Yeah, more bullshit. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, subscribe. Have a nice day.